Hi, my name is Janet Leakey, and today I will be discussing social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia. Social anxiety disorder is characterized by overwhelming anxiety and excessive self-consciousness. People with this disorder are afraid that they'll say or do something that results in embarrassment. It is often dismissed as shyness, and so individuals suffering from it do not seek treatment, because they may feel silly or stupid for doing so. However, it is distinguished from shyness by its severity and the power it has to impair the sufferer's ability to function in ordinary life. These fears are so pronounced and overpowering that they can prevent people from completing the simplest tasks. People with social anxiety disorder crave company but avoid social situations for fear of being considered unlikable, stupid or boring. They suffer from low self-esteem and are often highly critical of themselves. They shun public speaking and avoid expressing their opinions among peers. Onset occurs usually around age 11 in about 50% of sufferers, and occurs by age 20 in about 80%, meaning that without treatment, they suffer for most of their lives. This disorder prevents them from doing things like initiating and maintaining conversations, and carrying out actions in front of others, like writing, exercising, participating in sports, eating, drinking, and participating in class. Statistics show that people suffering from social anxiety disorder are less likely to be married than those who don't, more likely to suffer from depression, and more likely to turn to substance abuse as a coping mechanism. This means that finding effective treatments is vital. One such treatment is cognitive behavioural therapy, CBT. It is the most well-researched of all psychosocial treatments, and unlike most pharmacological studies, treatments involving CBT provide follow-up data, which has shown that results can be maintained. CBT is based on the premise that what you think influences how you feel. It is made up of different techniques applied in different ways. Typically, it involves learning how to control the physical symptoms of anxiety, such as sweating, blushing, rapid heartbeat and nausea, through relaxation techniques and breathing exercises, challenging negative unhelpful thoughts that trigger anxiety and replacing them with more balanced views, facing social situations you fear in a gradual systematic way instead of avoiding them, Social skills training, where you practice and prepare for situations you're afraid of until you become more comfortable. Three primary components help with this. In-session exposures help patients face social and performance situations in which they experience distress or situations that they may avoid completely. Exposure works best when they rate these situations from low to high and begin with a lower ranked situation and remain in it despite stress they may feel. Cognitive restructuring involves helping patients become aware of their thoughts and engaging in a process of reframing for those thoughts that are dysfunctional. It helps them see the world in a more accurate way. Homework assignments help them apply what they've learned to real life and develop a sense that they can manage what previously seemed insurmountable. In a study done by Clark et al. 2003, they compared their individual CBT to a placebo group of people with social anxiety disorder and a group being treated with fluoxetine. 60 patients with generalized social phobia were used in this study. Assessments were carried out pre-treatment, mid-treatment, post-treatment, and in a 12-month follow-up. CBT showed significantly stronger effects when compared to both other conditions at post-treatment and at 12-month follow-up. It is important to note that although CBT has been found to be an effective treatment for social anxiety disorder, a number of clients still do not achieve significant improvement by the end of therapy. Improvements to this form of treatment are still being made and are still necessary. The results from studies like this help determine which techniques in CBT work best for patients long term and are useful for people who are trying to decide which method of treatment will work best for them. Many people have to deal with the consequences of this disorder on a daily basis and often do so without any treatment. So if you or anyone you know has been affected by social anxiety disorder, just remember that you can seek help and treatment. Thank you for listening. Created using Powtoon.